What's up, Hope Kids? It is Sunday, and that means another time for Hope Kids at Home. I'm Pastor Tony. I am so glad you are here joining us as we kick off a brand new life app for the month. A life app is a word that we focus on that one, helps you know who God is and two, helps you follow him in a much deeper way. This month we are talking about all about patience and patience is waiting until later for what you want now. That is an awesome life app to focus on because we are waiting for things every single day. When you're in the car, you have to wait at a red light before it turns green, before you can go. You have to wait before you have to speak in, in class in front of your Google Hangout. You may have to wait until after dinner to be able to do something fun like play your video games. There is a ton of things that we have to wait for and there's a lot of opportunities we have to show patience. I know you know what I'm talking about, but have you ever really thought, how long do you actually have to wait for something like over the course of your entire life? Well, there is a, a place that actually did a study and we're gonna turn this into a game. So here's what we're gonna do. It's actually gonna be a competition where you can send in your answers. The one with, or the person with the most answers right is gonna get a special prize from Hope Kids. So here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna have 10 different questions come up on the screen. You have to choose what you think is the right answer. I want you to submit your answers through the virtual room. All right, so the Hope Kids virtual room, I want you to submit your answers there in the connect room. And then at the end of the week, the one with the most answers right is gonna get a special prize from us. So grab a sheet of paper, grab a pencil, get the virtual room up and submit your answers. And I'll see you guys after the game is done. of waiting for something over the course of your life, right? And as we talked about different examples of waiting, one of the ways that we wait the most is when we are making and baking food, right? It's the reason why the theme for this month is around desserts. It's because there's so much work that goes into making a dessert that we also have to wait, right? You have to wait for it to cook or to bake. You have to wait for it to cool. You have to wait to put the frosting on before you can finally eat the dessert. You see, just like baking, patience takes a lot of work for us to be able to do. And it's worth the wait in the end. You see, in today's story, we're gonna meet a man named Simeon who waited his entire life for the most amazing thing to happen. In fact, God told him that he would not die unless he experienced this thing. So let's check out the so-and-so show. Let's see what Simeon experienced, and I'll see you guys after the video is done. So... Please don't interrupt. Interrupt what exactly? I've been feeling very impatient lately. I think it's because we live in a world where I can get most anything I want instantly. I check my phone for social media updates every four seconds. Sometimes I can watch a show on TV at the same time I'm watching a show on my laptop. At night, when I'm asleep, I listen to music so I don't have to hear the deafening roar of silence. So I'm trying to prove that I don't have to constantly be doing something to entertain myself. 
By? By doing the most boring thing I could think of. Watching paint dry. Oh, oh. This isn't the part of the wall I painted. Oh, man. Worth the wait. Hello, my name is Brandon. And I'm John. And this is... The Social Show. Come on, let's get this show moving. What is the rush, John? Oh, we got fun to have, stories to tell, and lives have changed, my friend. And I, for one, do not want to delay the proceedings with any overabundance of frivolous repartee. Also, I'm oh, hungry. Okay, so... Uh, come on, come on. Okay, uh, that's... Frivolous. Okay, right. That's Today is our baking show. Let's eat! Okay, hold on. We gotta bake something first. Uh, it's a baking show, but right? I'm hungry now. I'm hey, hungry I get now. it. We're gonna... Okay, I'm sorry. You'll have to wait. We're gonna have a baking expert on the show a little later on, but first we're no, gonna play. No, please welcome someone who knows stuff. John, I don't think it's time for someone who knows stuff right now. You're just wasting hey, your time. Hey, come on out! They're come not... on out! Come on what? out! Are they here? Yeah. Yeah. Come in! 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 Here! 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 Have this seat. That's really great. Sorry. Sit right here. Who are you, and what do you know? Hi. Huh. Uh. My name is Felina Tossi, and I'm a professional pastry chef. I make cakes and pies and all sorts of sweet, flaky goodness. Awesome! Let's eat. Okay, look, uh, can you teach us how to bake in approximately three and a half minutes? Uh, I don't know. How, how much do each of you know about baking? Oh, well, I, I attended Le Cordon Bleu for a year. And I'm not entirely sure how to get the inside of an egg to the outside. Oh. Uh, well, that is a pretty wide gulf, but that's okay. We can bake something that is simple for everyone. A oh. cake! Oh, let's eat cake! We have got to bake it first. Okay, then uh, it's time for the so-and-so show cake bake. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the so-and-so show cake bake. I'm Felina Tossi, and today we're making this, a funfetti celebratory cake. Perhaps it's for a birthday, maybe a graduation. Whatever the occasion, this white cake with chocolate frosting is a delicious treat for any who choose to partake. Let's check in with our chefs. Ooh, as you can see, Brandon is doing one of the most important things you can do for any recipe. He's reading the instructions. Let's see how John's doing. Oh, uh, John is just going for it. He must be really hungry. Really good cake takes time. You don't want to rush it. Remember, this isn't a race. It's just baking. Just look at the way Brandon cracks an egg. He is in no hurry whatsoever. Oh, uh, yeah. You can tell Brandon's cake is going to taste good just by watching how much care he's putting into every step. Stirring by hand is a lost art. Chefs today often prefer electric mixers. Different chefs, two different techniques. 
Let's see which one worked the best. Brandon, bring your cake to the table. Wow, that looks terrific. What's your secret? Well, Felina, I followed the directions on the back of the box. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, let's uh, try a bite. Mmm, spongy and delicious. Well done. Thank mm. you. Let's see how John did. John? Yes, I got it. Oh, here it is. Want a bite? Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Forgot the icing. Hey, it just comes out like one. Oh, it's like cranberry sauce. There we go. Uh, did, did you? Did you even bake your cake? Well, Felina, I did put it in the oven for a few minutes, but now that you mention it, it did seem colder than it should have. Uh, did you let the oven preheat? Pre what now? Oh. Hey. Mmm. Bye. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Uh. That is not good. Just a bag. <gasps> you want to try some of mine? Yes, I do! Okay, let me get a fork for it. Oh, no. Spongy! Oh, yeah, you're right. Follow the directions. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh, so good. So good. <laughs> Hey guys! Hey Kellen! What are we talking about today? Well today, we are talking about waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And to help us through those long, long waits, we've got the So-and-So Show Players! God's people knew a lot about waiting. For hundreds of years, they had been waiting for God to send them a Savior, or a Messiah, like He promised. One of God's people, a man named Simeon, lived in Jerusalem. He was a good and godly man, and he was told by the Holy Spirit that he would see the Messiah with his own eyes sometime before he died. I will? I gotta get to the temple. Now, we can only imagine how Simeon felt when the Holy Spirit told him that he would see the Messiah. He was probably very excited. Yo, Simeon, what's going on, bro? Who are you looking for? The Holy Spirit told me that I would see the Messiah with my own eyes. What? <laughs> the Holy Spirit? said you would see the Messiah today? Well, he didn't say today exactly. Oh, well then, uh, then when? Just sometime before I die. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna head out, huh? Uh, see you next time, tomorrow, yeah? Same time, okay? Works for me. All right, all right, cool. Okay. We don't know how long Simeon had to wait. Could have been days, or weeks, even years. But he waited. Oh, has he come yet? Has he come yet? Not yet. No. Oh. In waited. Got to be today, right? <laughs> so obviously, it's got to be today. I mean, you have waited forever. Maybe. And waited, even after so many other people had given up. Waiting for that long for something so important would have been difficult. I can only imagine what it felt like day after day, year after year, just waiting. But then, one day, the Holy Spirit led Simeon into the temple courtyard. Simeon, 
It's him. Pardon me. Oh, yes? May I... Uh, may I hold your precious child? Oh, uh, we don't even know of you. Of course. What's his name? His name is Jesus. Jesus. Lord, you are the king of all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. My eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. It is a light to be given to the Gentiles. It will be the glory of your people, Israel. Simeon had seen the Messiah, our Savior, just like the Holy Spirit promised. It took a lot of waiting, but Jesus was worth the wait. Hmm. What I miss? Uh. The end. Let's give it up for the so and so show players. Great story, Kellen. Yeah, waiting is hard. I know. I mean, think about how you feel the night before your birthday. Now add that with the night before Christmas and the night before the first day of school or vacation or anything really exciting. Then multiply that by a million and you might come close to what it felt like to be one of God's people waiting for the Messiah to come. Simeon could have given up and lost patience, but he didn't. He knew he had the Holy Spirit with him, just like we know we have God with us, even while we're waiting. That's awesome. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. I'll see you guys next time, if you can wait that long. We'll do our best. Bye. Aren't you gonna? I am. And why are you not? I'm proving that I can be patient. I'll just do it. Re Reveal, Reveal the question! <laughs> Today's question is, when is it hard to have patience? You know, I think I showed pretty clearly that my answer is all the time. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to have patience when you're waiting for good things, like uh, having to wait to open birthday presents. <laughs> and sometimes patience is hard during bad times, like waiting for a sickness to go away. Oh yeah, hey, talk about it together, and welcome to the So-and-So Show! What do you mean welcome? The show is over. I'm getting started on the next one. I just can't wait! <laughs> Did you learn nothing? Oh, just like always. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Brandon, and that's John. And today on the show, we're telling the Bible story with laundry! We'll see you next time. Hey, laundry! <laughs> well, that's good! <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 John. No, 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 put that. No, no. Oh, ah, <laughs> oh, e. Ah, this, this is a nightmare. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I'm used to it. No, 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 no there's a fork. fork. Use a. Oh, fork. Yeah. You got oh. a little icing on your fingers there. A fork helps. Ah. Uh, huh? Let's uh, tell. Oh. A little corners. Brand new. You can decorate some more. <laughs> <laughs> Normally we talk about the birth of Jesus around Christmas time, right? We celebrate Christmas because it's the birth of Jesus. And oftentimes we don't read further into the story where we meet a man named Simeon. We don't know how long Simeon waited. We know that he was probably an old, an old man. So he waited a lot of years for the birth of the Messiah. You see, the Jews uh, heard about this prophecy from Isaiah, or they read about the prophecy from Isaiah, and they waited hundreds of years before God would deliver this prophecy, before he would send his son into the world, and before people would get to know the Messiah in the flesh, or Jesus. You see, Simeon has been waiting all his life, and he finally got to the point where all of it came true, where all of it came to be. Can you imagine having that much patience for your entire life, 
waiting for something to happen, waiting for God's promise to come true. Or basically, we know promises are gonna come true, but basically, God would reveal that in his lifetime. And Simeon was at the temple, he was in Jerusalem, when Jesus was brought in by Mary and Joseph. You see, his patience paid off. You see, he got to see Jesus, the Messiah, right in front of him. A promise that he's been patiently waiting for his entire life. Can you imagine waiting as long as Simeon did? I know for me, it would be really hard. I get impatient when my Wi-Fi is slow, when something doesn't load on my phone, when Netflix isn't working, when the YouTube video keeps on stopping because it's buffering to catch up. To wait decades, years upon years upon years for the Messiah. That's incredible. And I'm sure there are times where Simeon probably thought, is this gonna happen? Am I gonna see this? But the one thing that we know from Simeon and the one thing that we can live our life by is that when we are starting to feel impatient, when we feel like we can't be patient long enough, we have a helper and that helper is God. God is there with us, helping us be patient for the things that we're waiting for. And because God shows up time and time again without fail, we can rely and trust in him to help us through tough times when we're patiently waiting for stuff. Now, I'm not talking about you're waiting for something good to happen in your life or you're waiting for that video game that you've always wanted, but it's also tough times as well. Maybe waiting for mom or dad to finally get that job that they've been applying for. You've been waiting for maybe a family member to get better after being sick. Maybe it's waiting until um, maybe a bully stops bullying you or maybe waiting until you can finally start making friends. The, those big stuff, the things that feel so heavy, God is right there with us. God is there and we can trust him to help us be patient. So that leads us to our main point for today. It's that when you have to wait, remember God is with you. God was with Simeon. God was with a bunch of people in the Bible. And that means God is going to be there for you too. So in those times when you feel like you can't be patient anymore, stop and ask God to help you. Pray and ask God to be there along with you and to give you the strength that you need to keep on waiting and to keep on being patient. That's our challenge for you this, hope, or for this week, Hope Kids. Be patient and remember when it's hard, remember that God is with you and he's there to help you along your journey. Well, remember, we are open for Hope Kids, so we hope to see you guys either on Thursday night or Sunday morning for services. If not, check out the virtual room. We have updated it brand new for the entire month, so there's a whole lot of rooms to explore. Have some fun, play some games, do the activities, connect with us while you're there. And then as always, we'll see you guys next week for Hope Kids at Home.